what's up, guys? Welcome back to the channel. I am here again um, with my European friend, Glenn. Welcome back to the channel, Glenn. Hey, Jeff. Thank you. I'm so excited about about talking about this race, man. This is um, this is like the most classic, quintessential European race. In fact, it's so European, I don't even know how to say the name of it. So let's start there. How do you say the name of this race? Yeah, it's the Ronde van Goor, with grasklinkers and crosswinds and fast racing. So narrow roads, all those all those Dutch words you just said, and, cr and crosswind. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> It looks like a lot of fun and really close, like really tight groups. I think it's exciting to watch and it just makes me want to get back into racing, man. Um, but this was special. So how fast were the crosswinds? Um, today the crosswinds were about 25 k's an hour. So pretty substantial. It's like 15, about 15 kilometer or 15 miles per hour, something like that. Yeah, pretty, pretty significant. And this is like a, basically a two hour Criterium, right? You wouldn't call it a criterium, though. No. Yeah, we have a Dutch word for it. It's called an omloop. Uh, it's usually a, a longer, uh, a longer race, uh, and a longer course. This one's about seven k's, and it's a closed circuit where we can uh, ride the the laps on. So each lap is yeah about seven k's, and you guys were flying like. <laughs> Is it true? It's like what, 46, 48 kilometers per hour average? Yeah, we did 47 uh, k's an hour. Uh, it was, I think, also um, in thanks of the wind. It's close to 30 miles an hour, right? It's like yeah. 29 miles an hour. It was a fast race. So why is it so fast? Like, who are the teams here? You got you got some some hitters, right? Some big European teams. Yeah, we we got some good teams. We got um, um, teams who are racing the uh, national scene. Uh, of road racing here in uh, in uh, in Holland, also uh, racing internationally. So um, yeah, we got uh, we got some uh, some horsepower in the, in the peloton uh, today. Cool. I want to I want We have a lot to talk about. So let's get into the footage. We'll talk about the horsepower and how uh, how this thing unfolds. Sure. Okay. 85 kilometers left in this race. You guys were going so fast. But we forgot to mention your team. This is them in front of you. What's the name of your team? Yeah. Obviously, all is all. <laughs> I'm glad you said it. Um, <laughs> you guys remember their kit from last time uh, Glenn was on the on the channel. Uh, it was an interclub race. You saw a lot of these bright yellow, fluoro yellow kits. And um, looks like you guys were making something happen right here. It looks like there's an attack off the left into this cross, into this uh, little bit of a cross, mostly tailwind section. Yeah, we were and here with, uh, with under 23 team and uh, some elite riders. So we want to we want to make something of this race. Oh, and it looks like you're just letting... You had three teammates in that group. It looks like you're just letting the gap open. That guy in the green was not happy about it. But he had a teammate in that breakaway too, I noticed. So, like, he shouldn't have been chasing his teammate. I didn't get it also. And it, that's a very experienced rider. I think it's just the heat of the moment and uh, the begin of the race. See, you guys, they chase teammates in Europe too. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I don't just talk about it in American races. Um, <laughs> experienced riders do it. So, yeah, that was kind of a no-no. Um but it's all brought back, and then what are you doing? You're gonna, you're like, okay, well, my teammates were brought back. The guys in green and these other teams, they did some work to chase that back, and you're like, well, it's going 35 miles an hour, so um, that's not fast enough for me, so I'm going to attack. <laughs> attack and counterattack. <laughs> 35 miles an hour. So that okay, so that might seem crazy, but if you um if you watch if you look at the circumstances of of your attack right there, Glenn, I think it was actually smart, even though you the field is already going 35 because. You were coming past the front with some speed, and the front guys were slowing down. So what you're looking for in a successful breakaway is that speed differential. And if the front is slowing down and you're speeding up, then you don't have to make, you know, 1,200 watts, a huge acceleration, because that saps the energy from your legs. So you just carry your speed past the front, you have your gap, and now you're just riding solo, hoping that somebody bridges across, right? Yeah, and um, I'm hoping somebody uh, bridges across in the in the crosswind section because if we can uh, echelon over there, then we can um, have a have a nice gap into the headwind, and yeah, nobody's eager to uh, to ride in a headwind. So um, yeah, maybe uh, on this uh, on this uh, occasion, I can force something to uh, to uh, to get in the break. That's a good point. Yeah, if you can if you can make the gap in the t in the tailwind section. And then as long as you have, you know, a handful of riders, think of it this way. Like if you hit the crosswind section, the roads are narrow, the wind is strong enough where maybe only three or four riders can ride in, in an echelon um, before everyone else is outside of the draft. So if you can force a selection into the crosswind section and then you have a gap going into the headwind section, 
Nobody wants to chase in a headwind, and that's how you can make a breakaway successful. So, yeah, another reason I really like the timing of this attack. Yeah, only uh, the race is uh, just, yeah, just on the way. So there's a lot of strong guys uh, still in the peloton who are eager to uh, to bring me back. But you know, it's also making a point in the in the, in the start of the race uh, to take initiative and uh, let's see, um, uh, let's show uh, who's uh, who's controlling the race over here. Yeah, yeah, but unfortunately they don't let this one go, like you said. So let's uh, let's fast forward a little bit and um, check out what happens after you get caught. Yeah. All right, so now we're in the crosswind section. Uh, left to right wind, you can see everyone's on the right-hand side of the road. This is this is called being guttered, and there's a reason why nobody's riding on the left, because it's not protected. And look at that flag on the right. Just passed for a second. If you're if you're ever in any doubt, that's where the wind is going. Look at, look at something like a flag or a tree. Meanwhile, your teammate actually rode off the road. He lost focus for just a second. He went off the road, and that actually resulted in a pinch flat, right? That's the last we see of him. So early on in this race, you lose a teammate. That's a real shame. Yeah, it's a shame. I didn't know what he was doing. Maybe he was uh, he was thinking um, that he uh, got separation or not. I didn't know it. Just keep your head uh, with the race race forward. Especially in a, in a critical moment, like, you know, in a big crosswind like this, because look, it can be really dangerous. Like, in a crosswind on a narrow road, I mean, look how close you're getting to this guy on the left. I mean, you are like two centimeters from his derailleur right here. Oh, it looks yeah. so terrifying. Yeah, But this is like, we have 80 kilometers to go in this race. So now people are passing on the left. And I want you to, to walk me through, um, position yourself to move up um, in crosswinds like this. Yeah, you see here the riders uh, on the left are, uh, are in a train uh, passing me. And what you want to do is um, move up move up to the left side of the road uh, and to get in a train because um, the train is going forward to the to the to the front of the bike race and if you are uh, keep getting right in the shelter side then you are going to move back That's yeah it's not common that the group is going to be moving up on the sheltered side right because everybody wants to be on the sheltered side so yeah. it's kind of congested it yeah. slows down on the sheltered side usually not all the time but usually so you usually have to pay your dues and ride in the wind to move up in this case it's on the left hand side of the road which is the unsheltered side of the road yeah but usually there's someone else uh, doing that for you especially uh, that at that early in the race there is uh, fresh cars who are willing to go to the front of the race and you only have to wait for this this guy to uh, to move up and you can uh, easily get in his wheel and get a draft to the front of the race Exactly, and that's where experience comes in because you want to move up on the on the unsheltered side, but you want to do it when somebody is leading that train because the only on the person on the front is having to cut through the wind. So that's where experience comes in, and that's where you have to look for those moments in the race. That's how you save energy and maintain position. Yeah, exactly, that's the most important of uh, of uh, bike racing, especially uh, in crowded races uh, in Europe and uh, on the on the narrow roads with uh, a lot of crosswinds. All right, I just wanted to fast forward just a couple of kilometers and, and talk for a moment right here, because this is a great example of what we were just talking about, about, you know, if you're not moving up in bike racing, you're moving back. That's what they say. So you see this, this train on the left moving up and you're losing one wheel, two wheels, three wheels. So this is not looking good. And um, you find a good wheel and the, the guy in blue right here, tell me what's going on. Yeah, I, I recognized, um, I got, a, got to get on his wheel to get to the front of the race and um, push myself in the train. and. Yeah, I tried over the grass clinkers to get in front of the race, but um, yeah, the guy uh, recognized me. He didn't want move. you there. No, he pushed <laughs> yeah. me in the grass. <laughs> yeah, and do you want to preserve your momentum? So, like, it was a good idea to try to keep moving up because the last thing you want to do is touch your brakes, right? But you run a risk. Like, you ran out of road, he didn't want you there, and then you were in the grass, you lost your momentum back up to 600 watts. So, it doesn't always work out for you, but um, it was the right idea. You know, you were jumping on that train, moving up the outside, and you always have to look for those moments because. You know, if, if you're getting swarmed on the left, you might not even realize it, but you might be losing all sorts of position if you're not a part of these um, these constant reshufflings of the race, where it's like a conveyor belt. Yeah, we, we call it, uh, here in Holland, we call it uh, the washing machine in yeah. front of the race. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's just always kind of cycling, and the good riders are able to manage that and keep their position like Glenn is doing here, and uh, the inexperienced riders find themselves right towards the back and it's really hard for them to move up yeah and the more experienced riders and the higher the level the, the different more difficult it gets all right so there's another really good tip that you guys can use for racing in the wind for finding success in the wind and moving up for, kind of for free in the shelter and that's thinking about the next leg if you're on a course your corner's coming up like glenn has a right hand turn coming up he's going to be hit with a very serious 
right to left crosswind after this corner. So what has Glenn done? He's moved himself to the left-hand side of the road in anticipation for the next leg of the race. And what that means is he's going to be on the left-hand side of the road after this corner, which is going to be the sheltered side. So, you know, have forethought. Think about what's about to come, and then it's going to save you a whole bunch of energy down the road. But sometimes it doesn't always work out, and this rider in front of him tries to find a gap that doesn't exist, gets pushed into the grass. And again, this is like part of bike racing on, you know, uh, narrow roads with high crosswinds. Is this pretty common, Glenn, in, uh, on these uh, types of races? Yeah, I... In a race, you see this uh, happen a lot. I saw uh, riders uh, cutting uh, cutting corners, and uh, I'm losing 30 or 40 places. <laughs> so it's ridiculous, but that's what happened. Almost becomes like a cyclocross race. Yeah, <laughs> you see yeah. guys off road a lot on road bikes. It's pretty yeah, funny. But it's a win, you know. With one move, you got uh, 40 places. So why not? Yeah, and now this is what I'm talking about. So now, what you're doing. 200 watts on average up to 300 400 back down to 200 but you're going 32 miles an hour into a crosswind and this is the power of positioning in a crosswind positioning on a windy course and these this guy on the right he, this guy on the right he wants to be on the left hand side of, of what is that number 28 but he but you're not letting him be there so instead you're just getting this amazing draft right yeah but if this guy uh, recognized it he, he would get at me directly yeah. Or maybe the crosswind wasn't strong enough, or the stretch wasn't long enough. But even so, um, it's wasted energy if you uh, if you position, position yourself uh, in that way. And now you guys have turned into a little bit of a headwind, so it bunches up. That's to be expected. Let's uh, fast forward a bit. All right, guys, this is another one of these moments where Glenn is seeing a train pass on the left. He wants to jump on that in the draft and pass as many guys as possible. And you chose such a good moment right here. The reason I wanted to talk about this moment is there, you get a glimpse of the front of the race right here. And what, Glenn, you're thinking, I can pass like 40 riders right here <laughs> by doing one little surge in speed. Yeah, instead of freewheeling, I just uh, sprinted into the gap uh, to the front of the race. And you see me here uh, moving up on the grass clinkers and yeah. But you didn't even have to sprint. Like you, you did a small, you did an effort. It was it wasn't insignificant. But you did like four or five hundred watts for a few seconds. And instead of freewheeling, you you made this small price in in energy translated into like moving up. I wasn't even exaggerating. I think you moved up like forty wheels or something like that. Yeah, yeah. And all of a sudden, you're at the front of the bike race, following attacks. Check this out. Pretty crazy. Yeah, that's great. And I'm you, you see me. I occupied the left of the race, so nobody could pass me. You went from 70th wheel to third wheel, and now you're marking an attack at the front of the race. So that's that's just a really good way to to, um, to, to make position up. And I want to contrast that with a moment that takes place a little bit later in this race, which is not an ideal time to move up, just to, to drive this point home for you guys. Because this is a really important um, way to be successful in, in uh, bike racing, not even necessarily in crosswinds. So let's fast forward to that moment here. All right, this is literally a lap later, and I just want to show, this is the same part of the course, almost the same position on the course, and you have the same idea. Hey, it worked out so so good for me last lap. I'm going to move up again, but look at the difference. Now it's single file. Now it's not slow like it was before and bunched up. So instead of doing four or 500 for like five seconds, you are sitting here doing uh, 600 watts. Well, now it's down a little bit, but now you're stuck out in the wind. And you're not even moving up. This is the difference it makes to time those moments when you're moving up. You're stuck in the wind, you're not moving up, and you're, and you're making a lot of power. Yeah, you saw the front of the race was moving fast, and um, yeah, I tried, and I uh, recognized uh, it costed me too much, uh, too much effort to, uh, to go to the front of the race. So uh, yeah, I tried to occupy, occupy a space here in the wheel, but uh, the guys won't let me, uh, <laughs> let me in. These so. guys are experienced. He's like, yeah. nope, you're, you're sitting out in the wind. So uh, fortunately, you finally find some shelter in these guys right here but the timing of it and sometimes it's hard because you can't see what's going on at the front you still manage to get to the front but look at the difference in energy expenditure all right i told you guys there's going to be a lot of clips in this in this video but there's so much to talk about um and this is another moment when glenn um i really like the position you're taking here you're right up towards the front of the race and remember guys glenn wants to get into a breakaway he's got a he's got a field sprinter teammate who he wants to protect but also glenn's looking out for his own personal interest because glenn you win races from breakaways and if you can find yourself off the front in a smaller group that's that's very good for you and very good for your team so i just wanted to point out the timing here sheltered side of the road you took a really good corner and you came past the front riders with some speed this was like the picture perfect attack that i try to preach on you know with my footage all the time so 
you have a gap right here and what's going through your mind do you have um are you by yourself or do you have anybody with you um i was in yeah i was at first uh, by myself um but it was better to be uh, yeah um, uh, directly um Agenoling with a with a few other guys, then you can make it can make it fast and um, force a break. Um, this is not going fast enough. You see, we're riding here 45 k's an hour, and uh, yeah, I'm getting past yep. on uh, on the left side of the road. So, it's not going but how good work. of a feeling of that? How, how how good of a feeling is that when you see a teammate in the uh, the, the move that does a counter off of your uh, attack? That always feels really good. Like, hey, we got this covered as a team. Yeah, that's the best. It's giving me confidence that I that I can let it go and. Uh, can have a rest and uh, charge yep. up for my following attack. Yeah, let's go to that. Let's go to that following attack and talk about that. <laughs> yeah. And if at first you don't succeed, try again, right? Look, guys, if you're not a field sprinter, Glenn, are you a field sprinter? No, I'm not. So I'm going again over the grasklinkers. <laughs> you have to, right? Because you can't win a field sprint. You have to. You have to get everyone tired and drop the field sprinters, or isolate yourself in a breakaway with guys you can win. So this is. This is how you guys have to race. You have to commit to racing a breakaway, and that's exactly what Glenn's doing right here. Tries again. Sorry to say it doesn't work. No, but everyone sees that I'm trying again, and someone with a yellow uh, yellow jersey is again attacking. And that's taking in initiative in the race and um, uh, forcing, uh, forcing respect in the race. And you told me they were getting mad at you <laughs> for... Uh... Yeah. Hey, look, anytime the, the competition's mad at you, as long as you're obeying the rules, then um, that's good strategy, right? <laughs> yeah, this guy was <laughs> this guy was uh, was mad at me it's because I was uh, moving moving to the front of the race over the grasklinkers, and he thought it was dangerous. I think he's not uh, not a good bike racer if you can't move up uh, over the grasklinkers. <laughs> Especially if you're Dutch, then you have <laughs> yeah, to. Yeah, right yeah, you have to know. <laughs> You have to know uh, how to move up on grass clinkers, over grass, over anything. All right, we have to skip forward to like only a couple of laps left. And the reason is this is a two hour race, let's not forget. And um, Glenn, your, your GoPro battery won't last the entire race, but that aggressive racing just continued throughout this entire race start to finish. It reminds me of those Intelligentsia races that I did um, where it is just nonstop. But, uh, but now we're closing in at the end of this race. A breakaway has been unsuccessful off the front, many attempts, but um, but it's still time to be in the mix and make sure that your field sprinter is protected. So um, it's time to move up, Glenn. Talk us through what's going on. Yeah, it's time to move up. You see here, I'm in the back of the race and I'm, uh, yeah, I was resting a bit and um, yeah, I want to I wanna go to the front of the race. So I'm moving up on the left and I'm yelling at my teammates to, uh, to, uh, yeah, to hang on on my wheel. So not all of my energy is going uh, uh, to waste for myself, but also for my teammates because you're doing it on the unsheltered side. And I want you guys to pay attention to that power meter number because it, it's up at the, the five, 500 mark for a very long time. So yeah, to Glenn's point, like as long as you're making this commitment and energy, your teammates should be benefiting from it. So it's important to stay in communication with your teammates and let them know like, hey, all aboard the, the Glenn Express, the train's moving to the front of the race, let's do this. Yeah, and uh, the, more, um, the more riders with a yellow shirt in the front, the better. Absolutely, yeah. Especially as we're getting close to the end of this bike race. Yeah, that way you can force something. All right, almost at the front here. You're still bringing a lot of your teammates towards the front, and you're making a commitment of energy here still. Like, that's a ton of power to be holding for such a long period of time. But the reason I wanted to talk about this clip is, so you just passed, what, four or five riders? It cost you quite a bit of energy to do it, and then you slow down for just a moment. And watch what happens. When you slow down for just a moment in a field that's this talented, you're going to get passed. And again, I'm going to be sound like a broken record, but if you're not moving up, you're moving back. And you get swarmed by like eight riders immediately. And you didn't like touch brakes or anything like that. People just used your momentum. And fortunately, you had two teammates on your right. So so it's not all bad, right? No, oh, that, that, I think that was, the, that was a good point. But I think it's... Um it's a um, thing to consider if you're moving up and, um, and you're going to freewheel at the front of the race that you are getting swarmed. So just um, occupy uh, occupy space so no one can pass you. Yeah, and in this case, uh, it was a good thing. The silver lining was, was a couple of teammates, but that was, again, because you were yelling at them as you were moving up. So, um, yeah, just good communication. Stay together in the closing laps of a race. You're going to find team success that way. And it's not just you guys that are congregating up towards the front, right? There's this team with the um, the blue, orange, white, and black on your left here. Uh, what's what's their name again, Glenn? Yeah, they are uh, the Kanye's for Kanye's cycling team. They are uh, the top dogs of the 
uh, club racing here in uh, in Holland. They uh, they won the club championships uh, last year. So look how many of them there are. There's like eight of them up there. Yeah. <laughs> There's another one. <laughs> yeah. So I don't know if they consulted their crystal ball or something, but they. <laughs> They were sitting back saving energy while everyone else was going crazy early on in this race. And maybe they got lucky. Maybe they knew something everyone else didn't. But now they have a whole bunch of riders up towards the front. And they're about to stack the front of this race in the, in the final couple of laps, which is going to be potentially problematic for you guys. But actually, now that I've been talking, you're in a weird position right here doing 600 watts out in the wind for no reason. But actually, there is a reason, right? T t talk me through it, Glenn. Yeah, I got uh, to the right. So uh, my sp the sprinter... Uh could get a good draft and uh, be out of trouble on the left of the uh, of all the riders. So we uh, so we could have a good position um, and be sheltered on uh, on the right uh, in the crosswind in the next section of the of the race. As a, as a sprinter myself, let me thank you on behalf of your teammate yeah. <laughs> because there there is nothing better than having a loyal teammate be like, oh, don't worry about it. You don't have to think about navigating this potentially dangerous pack. You don't have to sit out. Look, they're talking too. these these guys in front of you. This is so important at the end of a bike race. Like you have to coordinate skills because a, a team win is a win, right? A lot of people associate, especially newcomers to the sport with like it's individual success, but it's very much a team sport. So Glenn, you have tried for the last hour and 45 minutes to get into a breakaway. It hasn't worked out. Your teammates have benefited in the process, but your final, your final compliment and your final, um, effort for your team is to position your sprinter for the end of this race. Yeah, he had a better chance uh, to, to contest the win because um, I tried the whole race to, uh, to be in a break and I expend a lot of energy. So so now it's time to keep it smooth and keep it fast and keep it safe for your, uh, your teammate. And um, let's see how that plays out. Actually, you know what? There's no need to fast forward anymore. We have 4,600 meters to go. Let's just talk through this race because if you guys caught a glimpse through that corner, um, there's a breakaway flying off the front in this moment, right? Yeah, and what do you think? One of the Kanye's for Kanye's cycling team uh, riders is in it. Yeah, they've been saving their energy. So now now these teams, including your team, Glenn, have missed it. It's their obligation to chase it back. Yeah, we have to chase it back. And I'm um, yeah, almost consulting my sprinter here what we are, are going to do. And, um, um, yeah, we yell. Uh, if we yell to each other, what uh, what we were gonna do, and uh, we decided to uh, yeah, to chase uh, to chase the breakaway because to, to break back because um, all the strong teams were represented. So it was up to us. Yeah, you have to now, and and now it's, it's it's now or never, right? We don't have 20 kilometers to decide what to do and how you know big to let that gap open up. There's there's no time. You have to. Uh -huh. Chase it back because you know those guys up front are going to be going full gas to try to get to the finish first. So what happens here? You have a teammate passing on the left. And don't forget, your sprinter is still behind you in the draft protected, right? Yeah, he's in good position. Oh, and you get bumped yeah, a little bit on the, guy on the left. on the left. He was, he was moving up on the grass clinkers, and it's an art to move up on the grass clinkers. I, I explained it before. <laughs> but yeah. You're the artist, Glenn. Yeah. He, he needs to, he needs he needs to, to learn from you, man. Yeah. <laughs> Okay, but 85 here in front of you, he's got a teammate up there. He ain't doing anything, right? No, he's, uh, he's, his team is represented. So the guy in front of us uh, is chasing now, and um, I recognize that the guy in front of me is not going to chase, so I, uh, I take over and um, yeah. begin pulling, uh, pulling the brake back. I recognize that it, it, it had to be uh, before the, the, the tailwind hit us, because uh, otherwise it's, it's a race over. And this is a common mistake I see, people not realizing who's in the break or not realizing that that one rider is just going to try to slow it down because he has a, a teammate in the breakaway. So this is kind of this is kind of your final effort, right? Like 500 watts, consistent, 550 watts. You want to close this gap down. Uh, again, just as a reminder, you have uh, your, your sprinter is in your wheel and you want to close this gap down because we are coming into the, the basically the final section of this race. And and you want to make sure that your, your sprinter is well positioned. And I was attacking the whole race and everybody's bringing me back. So now it's time for me to bring the bring this break back. It was a <laughs> big a bit of payback time, you know, and uh, I just committed. Yeah, this is for me. Um, <laughs> and man, you like this is this is impressive because you were attacking the whole beginning of this race. And now it's like you do this one more this one more effort to close the gap down. And there's there's your, your sprinter teammate, right? Yeah, this is a sprinter. So and you I, drop him off, I and you're like, all right, job done. <laughs> yeah, I yell at him. I yell at him. Um, go with him, go with him, go with him. Because this is a time um, you have to come 
you, you see this falling gaps here, this is the time you have to commit and uh, be in the front of the bike race. You see me here falling back 20, 30 places and from now on it's impossible to get back in front of the race. So job done job done for you. How does your teammate finish, your sprinter teammate? Yeah, he was uh, pushed off the grasklinkers, so uh, he didn't uh, all the well. Our first ride was ninth place or so. Um, so it doesn't always work out, guys. No, <laughs> Let's not no. forget this this sport is brutal. Like, 100 people line up, there's only one winner. It yeah. sucks. That's but, what makes the win special, though. So it doesn't always work out, but you guys raced a good race. Yeah, we had some good learning uh, learning points from this race, and uh, we can, uh, if racing ever starts again, um, pick it up from here. Fingers crossed. Glenn, always a pleasure having you on, man. Thanks for sharing your footage. I'll catch you guys at the next one. Thanks, Jeff. Bye. Till the next time.